Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. Over 250,000 women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year in the United States. And over the last couple of decades, even as cancer treatments have become targeted and better, many women are choosing to have a mastectomy as their treatment for breast cancer, as opposed to, let's say, lumpectomy and radiation. And close to half of those women who undergo mastectomy have reconstruction. Joining us in studio to talk about breast implants and other reconstructive uh, reconstruction reconstructive options, I was going to combine those into one word, <laughs> is Mayo Clinic Jacksonville Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeon, Dr. Sarv Tarkanda. Welcome to Minnesota and welcome to the, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a great uh, time to be here, and uh, I'm glad to be back in Rochester for well, a period of time. Before the snow flies. That's right. Exactly. Not too hot, not too cold, but it's raining. That's but right. That's that exactly okay. right. So it's been a long time uh, since I have seen you. You were uh, a resident here at Mayo a few a couple of decades ago or more. Yeah, it's been about uh, 25 years since I finished. And now you're on the, uh, the staff at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. Yes, sir. It's been 20 years there, and it's been a good uh, 20 years so far. You know, we want to talk about reconstructive options following mastectomy. But before we do that, because it's been in the news so much lately, uh, we're going to talk about implants. And the uh, the news has been that there's been a recall for uh, some type of breast implants. What's your take on that? So the current recall and controversy surrounding implants is the textured implants and their association with ALCL, anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Now, a, so what is ALCL? ALCL is a rare but treatable form of T-cell lymphoma that develops around breast implants. Now, that should not be confused with any type of lymphoma that develops within the breast because it is not a breast cancer. It is specifically related to the implant and the capsule that surrounds the implant. In your opinion, was it a good idea to have them recalled? And these are the textured ones. And is it one, were they all made by one manufacturer or all textured implants have been recalled? So there's not been a true recall of these implants, but there has been a voluntary recall of one manufacturer who has been represented highly in that textured implant uh, controversy. Uh, the controversy surrounds the amount of texturing on the surface of the implant, whether it's a saline implant or a silicone implant. The greater the texture, the greater incidence and risk we see of ALCL. Yes, that That's sounds just confusing. so unusual. It is unusual. Do you think that women who have those particular implants should have them removed? So the current FDA recommendations and our professional societies have not changed their stance on having these removed, but close annual follow-up just like we normally do. So if you have implants in, the normal follow-up is annual follow-ups, mammograms, self-monthly uh, breast exams. If there is a change, when that change may be change in size, shape, feel, or f increase in fluid around the implant, you need to get evaluated by your plastic surgeon. And the other thing is in your arm, uh, in your axilla, your armpit, you feel for lymph nodes if you felt a lump up in your, in your axilla? Yeah, anytime you feel a lump or a mass within the breast tissue or under your arm, as you stated, yes, it's, it's, you need to get that checked out. Are they leaking? Is that, what, is that what's causing the trouble? No, uh, this is actually a reaction of the capsule to the implant. Oh, my and goodness. We don't know if it's just the texture because it doesn't make sense that a rough texture would incite a cancerous process, but there is some thought process that may lead to increased bacteria that can adhere to the implant and increased inflammation that may lead to the formation of ALCL. Do you use textured implants because they stay in place better, or why use a textured one as opposed to a smooth one? So there have been a variety of reasons of using textures across the years, but currently the use of textured implants has been for creating that anatomical shape or that teardrop shape to the breast. The texture allows the implant to adhere and stay in position because you don't want the teardrop to move or rotate and become upside down, then you have an unusual appearing breast. The texture helps keep it in position. If you do get this disease, uh, ALCL, uh, a form of lymphoma, is it treatable and what's the prognosis? Yeah, it's highly treatable. In fact, in, if it's caught in the early stages, let's say you present with a fluid collection and it's, there's markers in that fluid that may suggest that you have ALCL, it's treatable by surgery. Removal of the implant and removal of the fluid as well as the scar tissue. 
Uh, Three-year survival is about 93% in its early stages. And even if you have advanced disease, whether it goes into your lymph nodes or elsewhere in your body, it's very treatable chemotherapy. Let's talk about BII because (laughs) recently a celebrity came out and said, I have BII, which is what takes it off into a whole other level. So explain to us, first of all, what BII is. So BII is very different from ALCL. BII is breast implant illness. And it is a term used by women who have breast implants and have self-described themselves as having symptoms related to breast implants. Now, these symptoms can be varied across from being very benign to very actually concerning symptoms. They can range from rashes uh, to skin changes to body odor all the way to cardiac symptoms or heart symptoms neurologic symptoms, or even hormonal changes. So there's a wide spectrum of symptoms. We have to understand that BII is not a medically recognized disease. Now, that doesn't mean that these symptoms should be ignored. They actually need to be evaluated by patients, by our physicians. Is there any, there's no one studying BII? There's, it's all just anecdotal? No, no. Our, our professional society, such as the American Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery, is doing research around BII. We recognize that patients who have implants may have symptoms. Uh, as, you, as you may not know, but back in 1999, the Institute of Medicine looked at all the studies re- involving silicone and possible association with disease. And through their studies and reviewing all the literature at that time, there was no relationship with silicone and any type of these symptoms. That's not to say that these women don't have real issues, because they do. They're reporting symptoms, and they still need to be evaluated. So the, the symptoms are, are very widely. Uh, is there, if you see a woman like this, and she says, you know, I really don't want my implants out, is there anything that you can do from a medical standpoint for treatment? Well, I think they need a complete evaluation. You may, have, you may need to get a rheumatologist consult. You may need to get the appropriate diagnostic testing. I don't think, as a plastic surgeon, if I said, we're going to remove your implants, that that's going to take care of your issues that you're reporting. I c- there's nothing to say or evidence that would prove that. Now, but so when, well, hold on. When, but when it does, then do you consider that to be placebo, or do you say, oh, well, this patient did, in fact, have BII? We, we, we don't have enough evidence to say either yeah. way. That's the problem with the whole situation. Right. It is a difficult problem. Some have said that this they think this is an autoimmune disease. What, what does that mean? So your body is recognizing that that implant is not you. And it says, that's not me. I need to fight it off and kind of wall it off from the rest of you. And by it forms, your body's trying to fight that. And that's what an autoimmune does. It's trying to fight something that's not a part of you normally. Hmm. Interesting problem. Does it do that with like a hip when you get a hip, you know, implant there? Or if you get a new valve, does your body do that? regardless right your body recognizes anything that's not part of you whether Mm -hmm. it's a breast implant a hip implant a cheek implant even a dental implant there's inflammation that occurs because your body says this is not part of me and that's a normal response now some people respond more aggressively and that's when they get into issues regarding these uh, implants it's a bit confusing because I always thought the term autoimmune meant the body was attacking itself uh, and this is a, is a foreign body, so it's a sort of an inflammatory response, and it d- doesn't make sense to me that people would call it an autoimmune disease. Right. I mean, it is kind of, it is an unused, but you're, it's your own body fighting uh, a problem within your body. Okay. Because this is becoming more widely known, um, again, just even because of the actress. Uh, what should a woman do if she is thinking, oh, maybe this is what's wrong with me? What does she say to her doctor and how does she start to investigate that a little bit to see if there's anything to stand on? So I'm going to I'm going to answer that in a moment, but let's look at what's happening. A, cele- uh, a celebrity comes out and says, "You know, I've got illness related to my breast." We don't have proof that there's there, and there's right. actually a large social media following. In fact, there's a Facebook group that over 70,000 women mm-hmm. that are part of this. Now, that's not saying that this is not a real problem, but that's what's increasing the awareness right. of BII. As far as if a patient presents with concerns of BII, we have really a long discussion with them about let's find out if there's any other issues that may cause this before we head to surgery to remove your implants. Because as a plastic surgeon, I can't tell you removing your implants will will 
change your right. prognosis or change your symptoms. All right, our guest is Mayo Clinic Jacksonville plastic surgeon, Dr. Sarv Turkanda. Time for a short break. When we come back, we will talk about reconstructive options following mastectomy. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Our guest is plastic surgeon Dr. Sarv Turkanda from the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. We've talked about ALCL, the disease that's associated with textured implants. Uh, we've talked about BII, and uh, it's a confusing, difficult to deal with disease. And now it's time to talk about reconstruction. So if a woman has breast cancer, elects to have a mastectomy or a bilateral mastectomy, meaning prophylactic on the opposite side, they come to you uh, to talk about reconstructive options. Tell us about that conversation. So that conversation is a really a, a fairly lengthy conversation but we start off by talking about implant reconstruction or just reconstruction in general and I start off by saying you know if you take reconstruction you can kind of think of it in three different categories the first would be implants the second would be moving tissue from one part of your body to another considered a flap reconstruction and the third would be combining the two types both an implant and a flap so you could take those three categories if you look at all the reconstruction across the United States, the most common way of doing it is using implants. It's the most straightforward way. It can sometimes be done in one stage, but other times it may require two surgeries to complete the reconstruction. So that's where I usually start the discussion. Um, after a mastectomy, there's not, there may be enough space to do a reconstruction. And in that case, a patient can go straight to an implant for the reconstruction. Wow. Many times there's not enough space to put an implant. So we have to create that space. And the way we do that, we use a medical device called a tissue expander. Essentially, it's a medical grade balloon. It allows us to stretch the muscle or skin or both if necessary, and then eventually create the space to hold an implant. So at the second surgery, we're gonna take that medical balloon out and then put in the uh, 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 permanent implant for reconstruction. So it's a woman who that ultimately decides, but from your standpoint, what factors would influence you to recommend one type of reconstruction, implants, versus another flap reconstruction? So it really looks, we look at their anatomy. If you're a very thin individual and don't have much tissue, meaning skin, fat, to recreate a breast, then you may, your only option may be an implant. Let's say you're a very thin lady and you want to be a small breast uh, size, then an implant would be an ideal reconstruction. On the other hand, if you have enough tissue, meaning fat and skin and muscle in another location, such as your abdomen or your tummy, that can be moved to create a breast. Uh, now, there's two types of flap reconstructions, pedicled versus what we call free tissue transfer. Pedicle is we leave it connected to its blood supply and we're moving the tissue to another location. So you, you can actually get tissue from the abdomen and move it all the way up to the breast and we, keep its blood vessels intact? We can. We use the muscle that we typically call a six-pack. We use one of the, the one half of it, the, <laughs> the three-pack on one side, and move the blood supplement on muscle, blood vessel and muscle with the flap up to create the breast. Everybody has an abdominal muscle, though. It would make sense to me that you would do that before you would do an implant. So there are reasons, right? Some people have had previous surgeries on their abdomen mm -hmm. are not candidates oh. but on the hand that doesn't still remove you from a flap because we the technology is advanced now where we can do microvascular surgery where we can isolate the blood vessels divide those blood vessels that feed that tissue and then connect it up to new blood vessels up near the breast so now you have a natural breast that's made up of your own tissue and you don't have the issues of implants at that point i just am curious of the patient's that uh, you see, and I suppose you're seeing them because they want to do reconstruction. Are there women who are having mastectomy that are electing not to do anything? You know, there is, that, is that increasing? I think it's been a steady state, okay. and I think as you know, as we're seeing these recent controversies that may that are coming out, mm -hmm. I think we'll see a few more that may change. But in general, you know, it's part of a woman's body image, and they want to we want to restore that body image. So I still think we're going to see it continue with reconstruction, but we'll still have a few patients that don't want reconstruction. The nice thing is they know exactly what they get. 
you know, they know they're not going to have a breast, and they're very, very satisfied with that. If they want a natural reconstruction or a flap reconstruction and the abdomen is not available to move or to transplant, there's other places that you can get this tissue from, aren't there? Yes, you can get it from the buttock, you can get it from the thigh, but you have to have enough volume or size to create a, a breast. If you're a woman and, and you want a D-cup sized breast, you may not have enough tissue from the thigh. So that may may move you toward the buttock area or even back to the abdomen. And you said sometimes you use a combination of the two. So you're talking about using both an implant and a flap. So in these situations, like if you've, let's say you've had a abdominal surgery, now that precludes using that. But a lot of times we can take muscle from your back and skin with that, move that forward. But remember, taking that muscle and skin from the back doesn't have a lot of volume. So to create the volume, we're going to put an implant in. Also. So let's talk now about nipple reconstruction, because oftentimes the general surgeons who do the, the mastectomy part of the, the procedure, removal of the breast, um, can spare the nipple, but sometimes they can't. And you uh, can actually reconstruct a, a nipple, right? That's correct. So a nipple reconstruction, and it's changed over the past 20 years since I've been doing breast reconstruction, we used to actually reconstruct the nipple so it would have some projection and some size to it. We use the tissue that's really located on the reconstructed breast and f create kind of origami and fold it over to create the nipple, basically. Wow. But today, what's interesting is most people, are ha most women are having tattoos, professional tattoos that can actually have that three-dimensional appearance of a, a nipple. The so emotional aspect of it is just fascinating to me, that to to emotionally look like what you looked like before. It just, it's a huge part of recovery from breast cancer. Oh, I, you know, I, I think we can't underestimate the importance of that. Right. You're absolutely right. So a tattoo that actually looks like there's a nipple there, but there really isn't. Correct. Wow, you're out of business. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so uh, talk to us briefly about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of the two different uh, procedures, implants versus flap. Okay, so let's go to implants first. Well, it's very straightforward. It's a, it's a much less complex surgery compared to flap surgery. It does, the disadvantage is it requires some follow-up. It requires, quote, maintenance is what I tell my patients. We're going to have to see you yearly. We're also going to have to follow your implants, make sure they're not ruptured. You know, these are mechanical devices. They're not lifetime devices. They're going to require some exchange at some point. I think that's the largest disadvantage of having implants. Now, if you move toward having a flap reconstruction, Many times you have one, re one surgery and you're done because it's your natural tissue unless you have some changes of shape or, you know, if you move abdominal tissue, it's still abdominal tissue. So if you gain weight, your flap will increase in size. Interesting. If you lose weight, your flap will decrease in size. But overall, I think if you look at <laughs> long-term care, flaps do have less surgery in the future. Uh, long term. You know, what you do is incredible. And I think the women of America who have to go through a breast cancer and have these reconstruct reconstructive options, I think they're extremely grateful. Most women who do have a mastectomy for treatment of breast cancer undergo some type of reconstruction. And there are options, implants and flap reconstruction or a combination of the two. And the decision regarding reconstruction is one that is made by a woman after discussion with her plastic surgeon. And you've explained that very well, how you go about that conversation. Our thanks to you, Dr. Sarv Trakonda, plastic surgeon from the Mayo Clinic, Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you so much.